So that's just a way that you can combine all of those strokes. <laughs> I just kind of made up um, a semi-familiar beat. Hello, welcome to the next washboard class. And the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how I maneuvered my um, strap on my washboard. I just took a screw and I screwed one in to either side. I even used the old holes that were there and I just kind of left them out a little bit and I'm using this guitar, this really old fashioned guitar strap that I just made the smallest I could. I actually needed it to be a little bit shorter but <laughs> I usually wear it around my neck but because this is a little too long, I'm just gonna kind of wrap it, let it lay on my shoulders like this, which I've never played like this before, but I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Get one short enough to where it it lays comfortably like that. I really like the the all, like this is very flexible. It's, it feels really nice laying around the neck. It, this actually lays a little too low on me. Like you can kind of see it's almost the, <laughs> you know, the breast line, and I don't like it that low. I usually like it a little higher, about right here. It's just all preference about where you like to play. I like to play a little bit lower on the board. So I like this to be my middle, and then I can reach down easily and do this. So these are my old, the, the same ones that I wrapped in the thimbles video, that long thimbles video, if you made it through. So to get these on, I'm not going to secure them on the back. I'm pretty sure they're going to be okay because uh, I'm not going to be playing super, super hard, super loud. So to get these on, I just give my fingers a little, a little wet swipe in my mouth. So let's see, let's see which ones these are. This one's for this finger. So I, just like that. And then I just, that's actually my, actually a little too wet. Wipe that off a little bit. And there you go. Now this is comfortable for now, but I can just tell by how easily I can pull this off that I would not do this for a show. I would definitely uh, re-secure it around there, around the bottom part to keep it from, from sliding off. All right, here's another curved one because my ring fingers are curved. All my fingers are curved, I think. That's very strange. It's a little humid, so these are kind of just going right on, which is good. I didn't even have to like those two. All right, I think I figured it out. I got them all on there, on fingers where they feel normal. This one might be wrong, but, well, who cares? They're on my fingers. They're symbols on my fingers. <laughs> okay, so this is the washboard here, and the first thing that we are going to talk about is the drag slap. So the very first thing I did when I got my washboard was I dragged my hand up the side, like kind of in the middle, and I'm playing right here, right just on this part of the curve in the flat part. To end the uh, sound of the, that percussion stroke, I give it a little swipe on the top to kind of end it. So drag, end. So it has a definite start and end. Another way I like to uh, kind of shape the drag is to follow the drag at the very end with a tap, I guess, or a swipe of the opposite hand. It looks like this. So what I'm doing is I'm not just tapping it like this. I'm actually swiping it, giving it a little more of friction, a little more friction in the sound. So this is what it would look like all together. So you can already kind of play a beat with that and you can kind of hear how the way this thimble and the ridges on this washboard kind of mimic on a snare drum when you would roll hit, roll, I don't know if that's a real thing, but it sounds like a roll on a snare drum and then a, a sharp stop. Um, a lot of my things sound very snare drummy. <laughs> um, it's my DCI background bleeding in. So I was doing it on my right hand, so if you were to practice this at home, you could set a metronome on just on your phone or on the computer, or if you have a physical one, that works too. And you could do four on one side on the right hand, and then four on the left side, alternating it. Uh, it could look something like this.
You can hear on my opposite side that my swipe is a little lazier because um, it's not as used to doing that stroke on, on the opposite hand. So I am really rusty, but it's the, still the basic concept is there. Um, it's kind of cool that you can see the difference between my dominant hand where I have technically more practice doing the stroke as opposed to my opposite hand. And so again, if, you're, if I was getting ready for a show, then I would just make sure to, when I'm warming up, it's gonna, need, it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to get there. And then just practice, you know, practice, practice. You can make a beat out of that stroke alone, just with that one stroke. Let me show you. So you see what I mean? You can get creative and just do it with that one stroke. You can tap by just tapping it like this on the board. But I actually found, the reason why I started to experiment with the, and make it more of a brush when I tapped on the board was because of experimenting on the road. Because hitting it straight like that seemed to be so much, it seemed to be even worse for the sound guys. <laughs> and I could kind of see why it's just a huge bang of metal. And so I tried to make it softer and all of my struggles really helped form and develop my sound so, uh, which is kind of a cool silver lining. So anyway, playing off the idea of a snare drum. I can mimic this sound that's kind of like a hi-hat, which is a, if you take music, it's a one e anda. So you have one, two, three, four, da-da-da-da-da. And it's kind of like a fill. If, uh, like you would, if you're a drummer, you might hear on a, on a hi-hat, the t -t -t -t, that kind of thing. I'm just gonna show you what it is first. So it's that da 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 da, and for this I I do just lightly tap it, and this took some time for me to practice. I really suggest practicing with a metronome that's going kind of that fast, da 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 da, because each hit that you make has to be timed. If one of those strikes in that kind of sixteenth notey that fast da 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 da, da is off, it's going to sound sloppy and it won't sound. It won't sound good, it'll sound, you'll sound off for some reason. Like, why doesn't it sound cool? Well, it's because it's, not all of your strikes aren't in beat. And so practicing to a metronome, not all the time. I Like, I hardly do it anymore, but when I first started, warming up to a metronome was really, really helpful. And just doing strokes with the metronome really helped sharpen me as a player. So when you, when you try the tap, da-da-da-da, you're just alternating hands. So if I go... That's really all you're doing, right, left, right, left, right. Um, and when you do it quickly, try not to focus on doing it, on, on tensing or doing it harder. Try to let your hands flow a little softer and act like your arms are lifting them off the board, kind of like a, very quick, like a, like a butterfly's wings or da 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 da. Lifting your hands off the board when you do it, because I usually keep my hands pretty close to the board. The reason why I, I keep I like keeping these two fingers free is because they help temper the sound. So you'll see my free fingers on the board while I play. Um, and I don't have to touch them the whole time to the board, but I like them to be there because it helps me know how close my fingers are to the board without um, without having to look down and I just, and sometimes if I'm playing softer, I'll kind of rest my palm or my wrists on the board. I really just play around, uh, but these are really help kind of soften the sound when you need to, locate yourself on the board when you need to, and those are the things that will lift off like a cloud when you do the da 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 da. Then you can work this in with your drag stroke, something like this. And that was me alternating hands. Uh, so hopefully from the side you can see how I kind of lift my hands off a little bit to help because you'll be able to play quicker with your hands lighter on the board. So 
I don't know if you can really see that visually, but um, doing that really helps me um, execute it quicker and cleaner. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is not only can you drag up, but you can drag down. So I have the push off and the strike at the end to end the sound. And again, I'm, I'm kind of stroking downward instead of stroking upward. So uh, practice that uh, and that'll give you a little kind of drill to do. Let's talk about walking on the board. I don't know how I can teach this. So there are times when I walk on the board with my hands and I'll, I'll go up like a... So you can do it two ways. The first time I did that, the walking on the board was just a straight tap. And then the second time I did it, I alternated going up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. So I would go around the board and stroke up, up, down, down, just alternating like this with my hands. So I just think of it as a circle where I go, I start here, and then I, and then I go around the circle like this. So I'm just alternating hands, right, left, right, left, and going up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, all the way around the board. And I find it just makes a nicer sound than the, the straight tap. It's just more pleasant. It's more pleasant sound. Uh, again, I'm getting really, like, minute in, <laughs> in these details, and you might not hear the differences in all these sounds at first. I don't know. Um, your ears become accustomed to a sound and then become more and more able to... Um, distinguish the details in it and so you might find that you don't notice these things until after you've been playing a while but so this is just me telling you after having played a while I find that when I'm doing repetitive uh, strokes on the board to move around the board while I'm doing them helps me a just naturally gives them a variation in depth and color uh, because as we talked about in the intro video, the different parts of the board all have different sounds. It also helps me stay on beat. And this might not be for everybody, but for me, I'm when I play rhythm, definitely moving my body helps me become a stronger uh, rhythm player in the way that I execute the rhythm. Um, whereas I felt like that I it was really forced and not as clean and not as natural sounding when I just stayed in one place on the board playing the rhythm over and over again. And so if you see videos of me playing, usually I'm kind of all over the board and I bounce too while I play because it all helps me stay in flow with the music. Uh, but you might be you might be the opposite, and if you are, it's totally fine. It's just kind of things that, that I found helped me. All right, so the last thing is something that I like to do to um, when I'm warming up and just figuring out the sound is just a stroke, stroke up, stroke, stroke up, and then stroke, stroke down. And uh, those quick strokes are, again, when I brush the board instead of hitting it hard. And so let me show that to you again. And I love doing that because, um, again, all four of those strokes have a different flavor. And it's not like... It's just not the same monotone um, sound. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, let's review what we've done. We have the, the stroke hit, stroke hit on either side, up and then down. And then we have um, walking. And uh, then we have the, the stroke hit, stroke hit with the fill. Da -da -da -da. So it's right, left, right, left. I like the fill there when I'm warming up doing that stroke because it, it helps you switch from right to left. 
um, without having to, without any weird pauses because of what hand you're on. Stroke, hit, stroke, hit, stroke, da 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 da. Stroke, hit, stroke, hit, stroke, da 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 da. These are just strokes that I do. I hope they're helping you. I hope this works. <laughs> these lessons. I hope these lessons work. <laughs> So that's just a way that you can combine all of those strokes. <laughs> I just kind of made up um, a semi-familiar beat. Uh, I really hope that this gives you something to work with and something to to bounce off of and, and spring forward onto your own journey. <laughs> I'm really having a hard time with the words today. Is this all for the strokes? Is there anything else I want to talk about with the strokes? I think that might be it. So um, I'll see you in a bit with the grind stroke. Okay. All right. Bye.